My friends and I, we edited a magazine in Bombay, small magazine, when we were in college and had time to spare, uh, called Blue Rhythm. And uh, so we were always in the, on the lookout for anything interesting happening. So that was in the 50s. So the interest was always there. I think I heard Sunny's rec- uh, first one was the one with Babs Gonzalez. I think that was one of his early early records. I think I heard that, and that was my my first introduction to Sunny. But then, of course, when he came to India, our interest was heightened. Well, somehow news spread around that there was a musician at one of the ashrams outside Bombay. A famous musician was there, and so we wondered who it was. And my friends and I, we, my friend's name is Niranjan Javeri. He was one of the pioneers of bringing jazz to India in the 60s. We, we drove around and another friend, Yusuf Karmali, they, we all drove around the, in the various ashrams around Bombay trying to find this person. And finally we landed up and found it and found that Sunny was at this particular, I think it was Chinmayananda's ashram, if I'm not mistaken. Ashram is, I think, a place where people go to meditate and uh, have some spiritual awakening or enlightenment. There's a, a, gu- a guru or a swami or some uh, person who takes over their spiritual needs by lecturing them and having uh, discipline in their lives and thinking about spiritual things. The meditation is a retreat and they're scattered all over the place. And there are some in America also, and people who want spiritual peace and peace of mind often go there. I, apart from Sunny, I know, as I told you, I think uh, uh, some others went, and I know that Illinois Jacket went there many times. Americans, uh, not jazz musicians, but many Americans have over the years been visiting ashrams to get some enlightenment. All sorts of people from all sorts of life, uh, walks of life. Then once we got him, uh, we took photographs of him, as you can see, and uh, we, we, I invited him to my house. I think we had dinner, was lunch with us or something, and the stay was very short. So we saw as much of him as we could, because uh, the place where he was, Tawai, was at least an hour, hour and a half drive out of Bombay. But in August of '68, the same year, I happened to be in Europe. And I went to Copenhagen, I went to the Montmartre with, where all these guys play, everybody plays. And Sonny was there and I had a very nice time with him in Copenhagen in 68. Just a few months after meeting him in Bombay. I remember a funny incident with the first the night I went to hear Sonny in Copenhagen. I went with my wife and there he was and we met and then he started playing. And he got into, after some time, he started playing a number, three little words. My wife said, uh, I'm tired now, can I go home? I took her home, uh, dropped her off into her room, so that saw that she was comfortable, took a taxi and went back to the Walmart, and Sunny was still playing three little words. <laughs> they just interminable, you know, maybe it's half, 20 minutes, half an hour for one number. That's great. <laughs> And that cemented our friendship and we talked to each other, we corresponded. When we visited New York, Lucille and he had us over at his house. And we had, uh, I think we had dinner there or drinks in a, in a place in, uh, in Brooklyn. Will it be walk? Will it be walk? <laughs> That's the one. Sonny Rollins, the man, oh, he's a, he's a giant in every way. I mean, spiritually and uh, he talks intelligently. He's been through, the, he's been through the, the rough part of life and everything. He's evolved. He's become what he is through a lot of pain and hard work and suffering. And so he's, he's a great man. And I used to love his early music, the 50s and 60s music, 50s music more. All the lovely ballads he played and all. In fact, when he started changing over and got into a different kind of groove, different genre, I wrote to Lucille. I said, tell Sunny to play his old stuff. And she wrote me back a rather a stinging rebuke to say, please let him alone. Don't criticize him. He's playing what he feels like playing. You fans might want to hear his 
stuff from the 50s, but he doesn't want to stay there. He wants to move on. So I kept quiet after that. Yes, he's always wanted to move on. I have great regard, admiration and love for him. And we have known each other for now 40, 50 years. I don't even know. Long time. And we still remain good friends.